Heavenly Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just saturate the atmosphere today, Lord. We pray that you would give us a word today that would empower us, that would infuse us with faith, worship, and praise. We pray, God, that you'd make us receptive to your word today, that we might be transformed by your spirit to become who you have called us to be. We pray, God, that you would just speak to the downtrodden. We pray that you would fix and heal the broken. We pray, God, that you give hope to the hopeless. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would stand and be with me today, Lord, and just give me the anointing that I need to preach your word. And Lord, we have not come here today to be spectators, but we come here to be collaborators in praise and worship and magnification. Because, Lord, we know that you are worthy to be praised today. And so, Lord, we come giving you praise, honor, and glory. And we come expecting to receive from you today. Lord, we don't know about tomorrow. But, Lord, we know that you hold our hand. And we know that you take care of our tomorrow before tomorrow even comes. So, Lord, we just come to praise you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all of God's people say together, amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ushers, you may retire at this time. I want to preach to you from the start today an exceeding expectation. An exceeding expectation. It was a philosopher that said, a Christian philosopher that said, our God has boundless resources. The only limit is in us. Our asking, our thinking, our praying are too small. Our expectations are too limited. When we really think about it on the backdrop of a theological perspective of who God is, why would we pray small? Why would we think small? Why would we expect small when our God is big? Somebody shout big. We're going to work today. Why would we have a limited view of how we expect God to move in our lives, our vocations, our marriages, our church, when God is big? Why would we look at things through the perspective of limitations when God has no limits? For the Bible declares that eyes have not seen nor ears heard. So why am I going to think small about what we cannot do, what I cannot achieve, where I cannot go? I made my bread and butter in 45 years of defying the limitations and expectations of my haters, my critics, and my naysayers. Not because of who I am, but because of who my God is. Somewhere in the course of our lives, we have to have the audacity to believe that God is just who he says he is. As we explore the text today, the Apostle Paul is attempting to transform the lives of believers. Paul doesn't want believers' journey to just be salvific in nature. Rather, he wants them to experience the transformative things in their lives through the capacity and the will of God. In other words, he does not want believers just to think that all this journey is about is just getting saved. But he wants us to have the audacity in our faith to believe that every now and then that God will do an advertisement through our life to just let the world and the adversary know how big he is. Sometimes he'll bless you just to let someone know that God is in the blessing business. 
sometimes he will deliver you just to let someone know he's in the deliverance business sometimes he will allow you to overcome the odds just to let someone know that God is greater than the odds against you somebody say preach Mac the apostle Paul knew it is a great danger in underachieving in our walk with the Lord. He didn't want believers then or those to come to be content in salvation alone without with the willingness to per per adventure toward the super abundant things of life. Because Jesus himself said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. He didn't want us to settle for a lifestyle or journey of where we aborted some of the things that the Lord designed for our lives. The Apostle Paul is attempting to broaden the mindset of believers due to their relationship in Christ. Because as you really get down into the express theology of the text, we find and we discover that based upon our relationship with the Lord, our dreams, our vision, and our faith ought to be driven. So in other words, the deeper my relationship is with him the larger I ought to dream I'll get you in just a few minutes as we look at the literary tone and context of Paul's writing to the Christians it is clear that he is attempting to broaden their mindset Paul asserts the following in Ephesians 1 he says that our walk with Christ is not by chance but rather he chose us before the foundation of the world in Ephesians 2 that when we were dead in our sins however he quickened us in the spirit Ephesians 3 he states that we are the heirs of grace and that grace is working in our lives. In Ephesians 4, he asserts that we are not merely to attend church and do church work, but rather there are some gifts that ought to be used and manifested in the church. In Ephesians 5, he declares that your marriage is not just a solution to loneliness, but rather it makes you complete in your life. And the married folks said amen. <laughs> Ephesians 6 suggests that prayer is not just a ritual or a habit, but prayer has the capacity to change our circumstances and bring down strongholds in our life. So when we look at the book of Ephesians, we see that Paul wants us to understand that God has not called us to a life of complacency and normalcy, but he's called us to a life of where we ought to have an exceeding expectation of what God is in the midst of doing. Do I have anyone in here that waits up in the morning and you just look for God to do something supernatural in your life. You don't look for the ordinary and the mundane but you expect God to do something that you did not think of yourself. You expect God to move in a dramatic way. You expect God to do a miracle in your life. You expect God to show up and just show you how big a God he is. Is there anyone in here that can say preacher you're sure enough speaking to me this morning. You're stirring my Kool-Aid this morning because I woke up with my mind on Jesus and I understand that he's about to move in my life as we saturate ourselves today with the text today, the Apostle Paul wants us to broaden our mindset that so that we can transcend the norms and the ordinary in our lives and look for the Lord to do some things that only he can do. At, at, our, time, at, our, at our times, our minds dwell on negativity, the things of the world, pessimistic perspectives, divisive behaviors, and defeated thoughts. However, Paul wants us to elevate our thinking and behavior to a point of where we are expecting an exceedingly abundant move of the Lord in spite of what we see or feel. In other words, in spite of what our circumstance might be, because of who God is and what his word says, we ought to expect an exceedingly abundant move of God in spite of what is against us. Oh, that's a word for somebody here today that is struggling with a situation. God sent you by here today so that you would understand that you don't have to stay in what you're in but you can expect a mighty move of the Lord I wish I had somebody in here that could say preacher you're preaching to my situation because the world told me that I would never make it that I would not overcome but the Lord just told me right now that he's about to move in my life and in my situation look at three folks and say he's moving he's moving he's moving oh y'all better help me in here look at somebody and say he's moving he's moving he's moving look at somebody and say I need him to move in my life right now 
because I'm not going to stay in what I'm in. I'm not going to keep going through what I'm going through. I'm not going to be called what folks have called me. I'm not going to be limited by this world, but I have an exceeding and abundant expectation that God is about to move in my life. Look at three folks and say, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. I believe that there's someone here in our midst today. The Lord wants to stir your faith to where you have the spiritual audacity to expect beyond what you can see. That is why the word says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because what we see will always deter and discourage us. However, I am glad that I am not led by what I see, but I'm led by what I believe. Look at somebody and say, I'm believing. I'm not led by what I see, but I'm led by what I believe because I'm going to always see negativity. I'm going to always see obstacles. I'm going to always see mess. I'm going to always see something wrong in my life. But when I lay by what I believe, I'm going to be led by the word of God. And the word of God tells me that I have the victory. Somebody shout, I have the victory. Put me on this podium mic real quick. The text challenges us today to become receptive and expectant to the uncommon moves of the Lord. However, we cannot remain defeated because of what the word says in our lives. We cannot remain pessimistic. We cannot remain faithless. We cannot remain toxic. We cannot remain broken or wounded because the word of God says that we ought to have an exceeding and an and abundant expectation of how God is going to move in our lives. After reading this text, the text suggests that suggests not based upon on us but rather based upon our relationship with Christ we are to expect a mighty move of the Lord. I dare you to become receptive and expectant to the uncommon move of the Lord in our lives. I believe the Bible says that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all of what we can ask or think. So in other words the Lord has a desire to do the uncommon in our lives. Somebody say uncommon. He desires to do the uncommon in our lives. So in other words, he does not want to do what, he, what is expected, but he wants to do the unexpected in our lives. And that's why somebody ought to have a praise and a shout in their mouth today because the law has done the unexpected things in your life. You were not expected to survive your storm. You were not expected to survive your tragedy. You were not expected to survive the sickness in your body. You were not expected to survive what was going on in your house. You were not expected to survive the things that was going on in your life. But look at what the Lord has done. Somebody ought to say, look at what he's done. The Lord kept me. The Lord picked me up. The Lord brought me out. The Lord has made a way for me. Oh, I wish I had some help in here because the Spirit's preaching through these technical difficulties because the Lord wants somebody to know that you ought to give him some praise while you have a chance because he's moving in an uncommon way in your life. Somebody shout uncommon common in here today. In other words, the Lord has a desire to do the uncommon in our lives, but we must be receptive and expected to the Lord. The Lord is trying to move in our lives, and before he can move, we are shooting down and negative about what he's trying to do in our lives. The Lord will give you a word about where he's about to take you in your life. And then you think about how small you are. And you say, I cannot do it. I could never get there. But the Lord said, don't place the Lord in a box and in a box that limits his capacity to bless you. We want, we want to continue to operate in what is comfortable in our lives, what is known and what we can control. However, I have learned at times the Lord will do the unconventional that we may not know and we might not like in order to get us to where we want to be. Can I give my testimony today? I used to didn't like to stand in front of crowds and preach and talk or talk at all but the Lord made me a preacher I would get nervous bringing my offering up before the church but then the Lord said boy you're going to preach and then now I've had to preach to thousands of folks before because we serve a God that moves in uncommon ways so why are you going to look at your limitations and talk about what the Lord cannot do in your life, what he cannot do in your home, what he cannot do in your job what he cannot do in your church I dare you this morning to 
take the limits off of your situation and believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in your life. Look at somebody and say, he's able. Thus, this brings me to the foundation and the prerequisite for what Paul is suggesting that the Lord will do in our lives. We all want an exceeding and abundant move in our lives. However, the relevant question is, are we willing to qualify ourselves for such a move? The apostle Paul implies, in order for the Lord to move in such a way that we must live a surrendered life. Before he will move in an exceeding and abundant way, we must first assume a posture of the surrendered. So in other words, if you are not living and laboring in a way that is surrendering to the Lord, then don't expect the Lord to move in your life. Perhaps the only thing that stands between you and your breakthrough is a matter of you surrendering to the Lord because it's not about what you want for your life, but it's about what his will is for your life. Do I have a praying church this morning? It's not about what you want, but it's about what he wants. It's not about what you think, but it's about what he thinks. And I've learned in the course of my living that the best way to get my blessings is to surrender unto him. Living a surrendered life is essential for experiencing the exceedingly abundant moves of the Lord. Perhaps the only thing that is standing between you and your deliverance and your blessings is living a surrendered life. Perhaps someone needs to declare that I cannot do this on my own or on my own terms anymore. But Lord, I need you to intervene in the midst of my situation and take me higher. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, go ahead and surrender. That's why the song writes said all to Jesus I surrender all to him I give freely I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all unto him is there anybody in this house today that can say Lord I love you enough to surrender unto you why should I live a surrendered life because the text asserts the Lord has no limits because the Lord is able is there anybody in here that can say Lord I know that you are able. Lord, I believe that you can move in my life. I wish I had some folks that didn't mind having church this morning. You ought to shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I believe that the Lord is able. As a matter of fact, I'm a living, breathing witness that the Lord is able because the Lord has paid my bills. The Lord kept me in my right mind. The Lord moved in my children. The Lord moved in my marriage. The Lord moved in my money. And as a matter of fact, if the Lord was not able, I wouldn't still be here right now. Is there anybody in here that can say I give him a praise right now because the Lord is able. And you see what I like about this text is that the text says that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Look at what the scripture says. It says now to him who is able to do exceedingly exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. You see it's because I'm connected to the Lord that he is able to move in my life. It's because when I came unto the Lord that something came into my life and into my heart. It's because I am filled with the precious Holy Spirit that even when I don't say a thing God hears what I need in my life before I even declare Declare what I need. The Lord said it's already done. I wish I had somebody in here that can say, Preacher, I know what you're talking about because I'm filled with the Spirit and I know what it is to commune with the Lord, to have just a groan and the Lord meet my needs. That's what I like about the old country church. You didn't have to write down a prayer request, but you could just come to the altar and just say, mm -mm -mm, and the Holy Ghost would communicate with God with what you need. I wish I had some Georgia, Carolina, Mississippi folk in here that can say, preacher, I understand what you're talking about because sometimes I can just lift up my hands and the Lord will move in my life. Is there anybody here that can say I'm expecting an abundant move in my life? I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but the devil tried to say you was going to die. He tried to 
say it was over. You never thought you would get your freedom or your liberation, but the Lord is declaring that this is the last day that you're going to be in your bondage. This is the last day that you're going to be in your sickness. This is the last day that you're going to be in your depression. This is the last day that you're going to be going through. But shake your neighbor's hand and say, this is the day that I'm coming out of my mess. This is the day that I'm coming out of my brokenness. This is the day that I'm coming out of my poverty. This is the day I'm coming out of my mess. This is the day that the Lord is going to set me free. Is there anybody, anybody, anybody in here that believes that you are about to get an exceeding abundant move in your life? I dare you look at somebody and say, I'm a recipient of the move of God. I feel him moving right now. I feel things shifting in my atmosphere right now. I feel things being turned around. Is there anybody in here that can give me a turnaround praise before it even happens? You can praise him like it's already turned. And I don't know about you today, but sometimes in my life when I need God to move, I've got to praise him like he's already done. Somebody show yes. 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 Is he able? Is he able? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I need about 50 apostolic folk in here to give me a praise in advance for what you need God to do. Oh, come on, don't play with me. I said give him a praise in advance. If you need something turned in your life, you ought to praise him until it turns. wants to move in your life, but he won't move until you change your thinking. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm not tenured yet, but I'm going to go out on a limb. Stay with me, Armstrong. This is a part of the worship service where I need somebody to put something in the atmosphere. I need you to put something in the atmosphere for somebody else. This is why I need 20 hand clappers. I need 20 dancers. I need some hand clappers. I need some tongue talkers. I need somebody that knows how to give God some praise. Put something in the atmosphere until something is broken right now. Put something in the atmosphere until somebody's saved right now. Put your praise in the atmosphere until some chains are broken. Doors are 